Well, now let's discuss uh, the autumn statement coming up from the uh, Chancellor this afternoon, in particular what the businesses want to hear from the Chancellor. Well, I'm joined now by the businessman and head of Cardiff Aviation, Bruce Dickinson. You might also know him as the lead singer of Iron Maiden. Good to see you, Bruce. I'm also joined by the entrepreneur, Emma Willis, whose bespoke shirt company counts Prince Charles and Barack Obama amongst its customers. And we also have Colin Stevens, the founder of Better Bathrooms and this year's Entrepreneur of the Year. Great panel. Now, I want to ask you all, both generally and specifically, what businesses like yours need to hear from the Chancellor, because it's businesses of your size that the Chancellor and the Prime Minister and everyone tell this is going to spark a real recovery in the economy. Bruce, specifically, first of all, given your interest in aviation, not much mentioned ahead of the autumn statement is there's a rise coming up, isn't there, in air passenger duty? Well, there is, and funnily enough, the uh, recent report for the uh, recommending things that the Welsh Government uh, could do in terms of uh, taking back some tax You're powers. Based in Cardiff. We are based in Cardiff, which, uh, as you see from the weather forecast, is a very nice <laughs> place to go for holidays, and one degree warmer than uh, ah, the West London. But... Uh, yeah, uh, airport passenger duty has been identified as something that they could, if they wish to, uh, sort of devolve from. Uh, as Belfast, in fact, Belfast has no APD. Hmm. The reason being that Dublin doesn't have any, and how can they compete in the same bit of patch of land? And, and I think the Welsh Government would make the same argument. You know, that the Cardiff Airport is a fantastic facility, underutilised. Um, so uh, they're, they're seriously considering it. I, I absolutely applaud that. Because, yeah, relieve uh, a bit of pressure on the bigger airports. Relieve really a bit government. of pressure, give people an incentive yeah. to go out there. Uh, it's crazy that people are driving all the way down to Heathrow uh, when they live in Swindon or, you know, or, or live in, in the West Country. Halfway between the absolutely. absolute point. Emma, specifically from uh, your business perspective, small business, how many employees do you have? And you, know, you, you need a highly skilled workforce, don't you? Yes, we do. Well, in the factory in Gloucester, we have um, 10 people now. We've increased from 5 to 10 in um, about two and a half years. And we're training young people there, which is really um, being very successful. We've got two girls, one straight from college, one who was working in Sainsbury's for four years and looking for a job in, in sewing. Um, my very experienced workforce there trained both those two girls to now be part of making these very very high-end bespoke men's shirts. Can, can I ask you, has, has there been any government support for this training that your company is doing? No, I've, I've done it all. I, I've done it myself. I couldn't get any bank um, loan for opening my factory. And my shop's been open since um, for 12 years. Um, so I did apply to the bank for a loan, but I couldn't. Um, so I've had, as I was just talking with Colin, I've had to just grow my company with increased sales, um, keeping the two in line. Um, Obviously, employing people is a, is a big responsibility. You don't want to employ someone unless you're confident that sales okay, will back well, it up. I want to see if that's a common theme amongst you all. The, the issue of credit has been <clears throat> around for an awful long time. But um, mm. specifically, Colin, with the, with the bathroom company, you started online, didn't you? But now you have physical stores as well, and they're based mainly in Wigan. We've got Wigan, Warrington and Manchester. Okay. Well, we started 10 years ago out in the bedroom, and um, we've had phenomenal growth. So. I can't actually complain too much. I haven't had any support from the government, so the theme is common. But we've grown our business, you know, double-digit growth, triple-digit growth in some years. We've now got 162 staff, and it's all been funded through profits and revenue of the business and nothing to do with support from anyone. Well, if, I mean, maybe you could have grown further and faster, though, if you had had some support. And there's been a recent report, and um, I'm I don't know if it's been overlooked yet or not, by Lord Heseltine, you may be uh, aware of it, looking at how to spark growth. I mean, he particularly has been talking about devolving powers and indeed a lot of cash to the regions. Would it make a difference to you if you felt that the decision makers were, were closer to where you are actually based rather than in Westminster? Without a doubt. I mean, again, I'd, like I say, Better Bathrooms have got a unique business model, but support-wise, if they were on the ground, you would see the kind of mistakes they're making. I mean, the town in Wigan, We've got like two shopping centres now, but we're no link in between. And mm. the planning authorities, in my opinion, have made a real mess of it. You know, you walk around the traditional Wigan Town Centre and all the shops are, well, 60, 70% of the shops are closed. Now, you know, you could look at enterprise zones. And I, I was, because we were on the show, I was looking at enterprise last night. And we've got one in Lancashire, which is to do with manufacturing. And I think actually to do with maybe engineering and aviation mm. as well. Um, but there's no uh, enterprise zones for startup businesses, and giving them that relief for a period of time, you know, what's what's going to give people a confidence to, to give okay, it a well, go? I mean, music to has done is that's exactly what he's been saying. Bruce, what about this issue? Let's get general then. Here, and we've heard it said mm -hmm. uh, from Emma and Colin. 
credit? I mean, could your company be doing better if you had ease of accessing credit, if the banks were prepared to lend you more? Um, well, yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we're lucky in that respect because we've just undergone a, a lengthy due diligence process from a venture capital investor that's, uh, that's, that's coming in. But in actual fact, we're, we're delaying the, 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 the dropping of that money, as it were, because we're trying to fund the whole thing ourselves um, and wow. fund it from business coming in, because the more we do that, the more of a, a bargaining situation we have with okay, the VC well, guy when he comes in. Well, know? let me ask you about, I mean, the, the, the money that goes out to the Treasury. I mean, businesses like yours are a bit of a sitting target. You're not multinationals. Oh. You can't move offshore. Um, yeah. Do you fear that when the Chancellor talks about a tax crackdown, that uh, he really should target those multinationals, but it's small businesses like yours that are much easier to get a hold of? I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. We, we signed a 20-year lease on the facility we, we, we've got, a fantastic facility, 132,000 square foot of, of big maintenance hangars, right? Um, now, uh, as soon as we signed that lease, and you know, we got a bit of a grace period, the first thing that landed on our doorstep was a 60 grand bill for stamp duty. Thank you very much, Mr. Chancellor. That's a great way. You know, how many jobs is that? That's letting the little acorns flourish, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And we're like, well, great. You know, so um, our seed money is about a half okay. a million quid, uh, of which 20% of that's gone overnight. Right. And uh, similar experiences or anything well, like that from you? Or do you just fear well, yeah. for, for, for if this tax date does go up, that businesses like yours? Well, the be. thing that annoyed me recently was finding out um, that the health and safety um, checks that you this have to the have tape, for, the, from, yeah, the red tape, tape. Um, as a manufacturing business and we would be absolutely with your health and safety we're using you know, heavy machinery in. Um, so um, they've actually increased the charges for the health and safety visit. If you, you have to have you have your health and safety visit, if you then um, have to have the, um, a, the, the health and safety officers have to come back for any reason at all, um, they've, they've increase the charges hugely. I mean, really quite frightening charges. If you then have to do a report, it's something, I, I can't remember my figures, but mm. it's, the, it's a cost they've increased, yeah. which, is, uh, which is something that when you're supposedly encouraging manufacturing. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, we are running out of time, but Colin, just briefly on that, I mean, do you get a sense that, and you've touched upon it already, that you hear the Chancellor talking the talk, but uh, when it comes to walking the walk, on all kinds of things, it's just not happening. He's got a tough job, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of historical and for me, if I was him, I'd be looking at getting more disruptive. Um, just at the Entrepreneur of the Year just recently when I won that award, that was one of the yeah. things they called me. And I would look at national advertising. Um, you know, ITV earns revenue of one point whatever billion, 1.5, I think it was. Traditional media, BBC, don't create those revenue streams. But also, look at Google. Google is an American company that's coming into the UK, and we spend millions with them on advertising. But none of that money that we spend with Google goes to our economy. So for yeah. me, if I was a Chancellor, I'd be pushing to create a new Google, call it Britain.com, <laughs> yeah. and get revenue in. Great ideas. Listen, <laughs> thank you all. We are out of time. I hope the Chancellor, well, he won't have been listening, but let's hope some of this gets, gets back to him. Really good to see you all. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Time and your expertise.